Hey, and welcome back to the ESL ESCA Pro League. We are going to be going into our third game very, very soon. As you saw, we do have all 10 on the server, and this one's going to be really interesting. Some things have changed on both sides, really. We have Hellraisers and Mouse with a new yeah. player on either side. Yeah, and I'm very excited to see how this one pans out. Mouse seemed to have had not a dip in form. I think they went from being extraordinarily good to having a little bit of a quieter time recently, not yeah. picked up as many clean results as they'd want to. Um, but then again, you know, Nico being featured is always going to be a big factor. Goodbye, I'm Very Spitty. excited. Yeah, exactly. I, I think once Nico gets adjusted here and, you know, the comms kind of adjust around as well, this could be a very dangerous lineup. I don't think anyone's disputing that. And on the other side of things, of course, Hellraisers as well. Uh, making a couple of changes, of course, Dozier being the one to kind of take a back seat. They're quite surprising, but regardless, they've made a change and it's Fix coming in. Yep, so Fix is going to be the one playing uh, in his place. Over on Cobblestone as well, a map that I think both teams are actually... This is one of those ones where there isn't an obvious lenience. It's basically both teams are competent on yeah. Cobble. I've seen Mouse have some really good Cobbles. It's actually God B who's always had these kind of crazy, like, long executes where they have lots of smokes, lots of flashes thrown out from long, and then they do charge mm. on towards that uh, a bomb site. I would just say the one thing that sticks to my mind, at least to a smaller degree, was the qualifiers towards the uh, major. If I'm yep. not mistaken, they made it through towards about the you know the group stages. Well, not even you know towards the main stages and stuff like that. Um, it was it became a little bit of a, a real issue for Maus. Uh, I think it was against Kingwin, if I'm not mistaken, and they just they weren't predicting it right. They were playing very repetitively, and even Gobby said, "I'm absolutely gutted that I didn't get to play in front of the crowd." Um, and you could see how devastated he was, and it was it was an error that he took on his own shoulders as well as an in-game leader. So I can imagine this, this map certainly has some great feelings towards it for them because they know that they can play it very well. But it's also going to have some, maybe some residing factors there as well yeah. for God B. But hopefully that's now in the past and we're going to see what we have coming into this game. And I'm very excited to see how these two teams come out. Yeah, I'm, I didn't quite catch who won the knife round. No, me neither. Oh, okay. Well, we suck. Um, so people. we are going to be finding out we'll find out who soon. has the choice of side. Because it's always interesting one on Cobble. Um, to yep. see, it does look like we're going to be seeing Mouse Sports start on the CT side. So that, of course, leaves Hellraisers over on T. So, <laughs> But it doesn't really give away who won the yeah, knife. That either. doesn't tell us anything. It's Absolutely nothing. We really do prefer that T side. It's something that we've discussed before. Um, hey, oh, we are seeing the Julies next. We're going to pick oh, those up. You. All right. I'm excited to see the Julies. I'm very excited to see that. Uh, it didn't work out very well for Get Right, where we saw it before. So there was also a Zeus in play. It's actually Chris J who's picked that one up because, of oh. course, it costs 100. He's actually made Might that decision, as well, I, guess. I guess. Yeah, going crazy with that investment. Of course, with the 150 left over after the Kevlar, he chose to go for a Zeus, which actually, you know what, doesn't doesn't surprise me. That's actually quite a smart pickup. And now we're going to be seeing how far they can get in this one. But Mouse have done a four-man stack towards B very early on and actually fairly dedicated as well. Two towards drop, playing it actively. Chris J in the back there, and maybe that Zeus is going to be coming out to play. It can be a one-shot gun pretty much at this point if oh, anyone comes through. If Angel drops out here or shows a little more, it's going to be Chris J getting killed, but Godby just says, all right, I'll do it for you, screw it. And now we're going to see the rest of Hellraisers maybe taking a little bit of a note here, going, well, we saw two of them, maybe at least one in towards drop. Let's see what we can do maybe towards A, but Dennis has been keeping hold of this. And now Godby and Nex already rotating very quickly and reading the situation extraordinarily well. We might actually see the Julies get some action. Yeah, Adrian's has managed to level the playing field, but look at Nex with a Julie, just the one for him as he tried to go Rambo. And now Chris J and Nico are the ones forced to try and retake the site. Adrian's is going to be the first to be tested as Kucha is the one to get that bomb down. Actually, very comfortable crossfire from Hellraiser. Look at that. There's no way they're going to be able to breach that unless Mouse, or rather Mal, overextends. He does go down. Now it's a 2v2, and this is becoming more and more doable, especially if he catches Adrian. Look at this. Kucha swings around with a Tech 9 to bring it into a very nasty position for Nico. And that is all she wrote. Adrens as well. And the important thing was there that actually it was two 1v1s. They weren't able to go into an active crossfire. Then Mouse were able to single those two players out, take them in the individual instances. But still, it doesn't matter. Hellraisers won those 1v1s and then converted it to that first round win. So really impressive stuff from Hellraisers, even though Mouse did read the situation well towards the end, getting three players over towards the A site. But now into this round we go. And once again, Chris J with the Zeus. It's basically, I can imagine, just be used in drop in tow with whoever's playing with him as Godby before. And he's probably going to sit there and wait it out if anyone drops in. It's a lot of money, easy kill, and actually gets a gun from it as well. So two rifles coming out for Hellraisers. Not too much invested. It looks like they're going to play it out fairly standard here. Yeah, of course, changes to the Julies, uh, increasing a little bit of their range as well as their effectiveness. We're gonna, maybe going to be seeing them by, bought out a little more. Already Moe's actually chosen oh, to pick one great up. Great shot from Nico. Nico. good connection with the Deagle. This could be our Zeus, it is! As Fix gets electrocuted in the back. His spine is no more, and we see a 3v3 then. 
Established, and Mouse could actually extend this. Angel's gonna go down as well. This is fantastic from Mouse, and they have found success. It's gonna be three members still standing. They can go on a little hunt and swoop up two AKs as well. What a fantastic second round they from the Germans. They picked up every single rifle that was purchased. That's the important part, and even an SMG as well coming through for Gobby. So they got everything good out of that round. They kept the players with a lot of the head armor in place. Of course, the Zeus kill coming in will give Chris JF a bit of cash as well. He's gonna be going straight up towards the M4. Still going with the silencer on that one, so not going to be switching back to the more standard purchase. And now Hellraiser is in a real predicament. They're down to just P250s, no armor, no flashes. Just pretty good to try and get what they can. Any sort of easy pickup here. And already, look at this, waiting for them to cross through. Yeah, the newer name from Hellraiser is getting a bit of a trial by fire now from Chris J. Zeus. And it looks like Dennis is about to be the one challenged on long. He's already found two. He can very well find three with the M4A4. Chris J. looking to uh, remind us of old times with the A1 at this point. Two players are about to push onto his location to see if he can finish where Dennis left off, and it is looking very easy. Adrian's brain, brains are splattered across Cobble, and so are Cooch's. That's going to be 2 1 then. The score Hellraiser's nothing invested in just finding the one frag for that one. Yeah, and even picking up the standard A4 as well, because it's a slightly more expensive gun, of course, than the silence version. So you can see they're being repurchased back into it if required. But Gobby's got a lot of money being built up as well. And Chris J going to go back in towards the rifle. I can imagine maybe Gobby could drop him an AWP later into this. But actually, we saw Mouse on their CT side really shying away from Chris J picking up the AWP during that uh, kind of qualifier stage going towards the Major. So surprising, but maybe a factor once again. But we're seeing the Hellraisers back on towards a buy, a lot more utility to work with. Not ideal, though. And it looks like they're still putting presence towards the A side, maybe finding Chris J and Dennis an ample start, a little bit of an ample target to begin with. Yeah, and I'm intrigued to see how far Colby can get with that MAC-10 against fully armored opponents. It's going to be Chris J then who opens up the fray. It's potentially going to get a second here. It brings Mo down within an inch of his life. Five, excuse me, six points of health. And now Adrens is going to try and make something happen in towards drop, but it's just so much going on. There's Molly, there's smoke, there's flashes, and that drop room is a little too intimidating for him. Now, 4v4, but one side is most definitely much more healthy than the other, as Hellraisers are battered and bruised at this point. They have 50 seconds, they've got plenty to work with, and it looks like they are starting to orientate themselves towards the uh, A site. And let's see if Dennis and Nex can actually receive this well. They've split it up, so Gobby and Nico are going to play B. Angel's going to oh, do some great play there. You can see him just by drop. If he gets down, he can actually stop the rotate from Gobby and Nico and allow pretty much Hellraiser to have a much easier time in this. That seems to be the intention. Flash comes out. Angel turns it. This is a very slow-paced round. Angel looking for his chance. He gets one. He doesn't get the second. That might spur on the rest of Hellraisers to make their move. 20 seconds left. Dennis still on the side. He's still got smokes to put into play. There's still a Molotov on next. That can slow down the plant, but 15 seconds. Here we go. Adren's got the bomb. It's Dennis up close and personal, but it's next getting the kills. That's two players gone for Hellraisers, and the bomb will fall to the hands of Dennis in the end, who will indeed pick up the silence. I'm not sure why he's gone for that one uh, in the end, but still, they get the round on the board. They stop Hellraisers from even getting the plant, and that's important. Yeah, that was the crucial round then from Mouse. They seem to be very much kind of uh, reading into the Hellraisers play. The fact that they smoked themselves off, they basically gave themselves an artificial wall whereby they could operate in a smaller, much safer space to try and keep that site safe. And ironically, that was something Mouse did really well on their T sides when they eventually went towards the A site. Looking back at when they played out, this lovely wall of smoke that just allowed them to pass through. And wow, it's great seeing that feature back, but Angel has none of it. He doesn't like the update much himself. He's going to take that one out, just kind of highlight the little bug that he does actually recover the gun as well. That's important, but great little flash comes through. Godby's going to make the peak, and this is going very well until... Well, okay, let's bear in mind, this is an eco from Hellraiser, so at least getting a gun away from Dennis is going to keep that economy a little little more well controlled, but Nico catching down fix. Patient Nico is what he is, as he was sticking around on B, the only man left on B, and you can see what Hellraisers had in mind. They wanted to try and draw all of the CTs over towards A, but they didn't see the bomb, they didn't force that final rotate to come over from Nico, and he just stood his ground and managed to get that bomb carrier down. Fix was the one that was given that responsibility, of course. I'm hoping to see a bit more from him so far, sitting at 0-5, maybe following in the footsteps we saw over in that first game. The Not the debut, but the, one of the uh, more recent games from Config, the new addition to SK. He was sitting about 0-12, I think, at one point as well. So the newer names so far haven't been having the best showing here at the Pro League. No, but this is good from Hellraisers. They're playing very patiently towards the A side. Maybe waiting to see if Chris J or Dennis fancies getting a little up close and personal. But the early attention, at least from the utility side of things, is over towards B. But Hellraisers taking their time here, trying to read the play well. Dennis on the precipice, though. He could go for a little peek. Doesn't, though. Backs away. The bomb still quite far back. Hellraisers not looking for an early commitment. 
not putting all of their utility into place yet either. Looks like normally if you see this many mollies, at least on this map, it does get placed towards that B side, but they're not going to hedge their bets too early on here, Alex. There's still a minute left here, and they're looking to try and find an opening. Well, how will that opening be, though? That's the question. Looks like our races are hoping that there will be something towards drop. I think most definitely Nico and Gobi might have something to say about that. There's Adrian. The smoke it out on Molly. It's actually him who's responsible for both of those smokes and flat mollies. But look at this. They've dragged Gobby over towards A. This is going to give them pretty much a 4v2 on this B side if Gobby doesn't make it back in time. And here we go. There's the flashes. Nico's going to retract back, allow Next to keep attention, but no one's in drop. And they've, they, they, they have fixated on it, and there's no one even in there. Allowing Fix to come through. Fine, Nico. Open this up. Adren's now slipped into the matter. Going to catch the rotate, but that's not the point here. Hellraisers are starting to take towards the side. But Dennis and Next say no. Great play from Next point out on that statue. Wow. Stunning play from Dennis in the end to finish off all of those threats as now just Angel left alive 1v4 he will find one but the time is against him the bomb is not to hand but he's doing what he can here takes away God B but Chris J made it through caught him in the heels and Mouseports retain the round very very uh, impressive CT side so far from the Mouseports side Hellraisers have been finding a couple of entries uh, we saw that happen both on A and B, and every single time they have a good read on it, they manage to try and deal with them both with individual prowess, but also with a very, uh, well, it seems like a more synergistic style. They have been kind of working with each other, which is quite nice. And yeah, I very well may have just made up a word, but there was synergy that most definitely present in the defensive side. Bomb is loose at spawn. It looks like Hellraisers are going to be charging very fast towards the two CTs. Chris J and Dennis are about to be tested. Dennis is the first and he bows out happily as he takes one. Chris J in the meantime taking two towards long and Hellraisers, they try to turn up the heat. They try to pick up the pace and all it has is just make them die just a little bit faster. Exactly that. Chris J had the time of his life then. He's been generally at least doing the one-for-one -one trading and then kind of leaving it to Dennis to pick up the rest and then Gobby rotates, but this time picking up two and then Dennis as well doing the same really hindered this round. Now, Hellraisers didn't have that much utility to play with, so I guess they tried to just make that early presence known and just go for it off the back. And Adren, his number's certainly up, and Chris J showing that you can still use that silence gun. Maybe in, it seems like he's doing very well in these closer hmm. range instances, but this is a very clean scoreline for Mouse, bearing in mind. We know that a lot of teams do prefer the T-side to some degree, or at least you know feel they can pick up a good couple of rounds, but Hellraisers thus far only finding one really not ideal. Yeah, absolutely. I think the kind of majority of teams consider the T side to be the more favoured side and occasionally we do see these glimmers of real comfortable CT halves and still the factors to kind of determine that has have been a little bit kind of tough to predict, tough to call. At this point, 6-1, Hellraisers, they've got the Tech Knives, which of course, you know, towards drop room is usually the favoured position when you have those Tech Knives. Perfect angle adopted from Gobby, making the best out of a bad situation. A blind fix finds one. Next, trying to get a second out of that one, but he can't. And it's going to be Hellraisers then who do get, oh, burned alive. It's Fix who went down and they have a 3v3, but most definitely do not have level numbers in weaponry. Nico trades out Adran. But the important factor then was Adren saw the last two players making their way from A. They knew that there'd still be Nico on the side, but it's not Nico to get the kills at this point. It's going to be Dennis coming into it, and now Kucha again. He does have an AK, which is something the rest of Hellraisers didn't, but he's only going to find Dennis with it so far. He's still got two more to go. 50 seconds, though. Can he make anything out of this? One player to his right, one to the left. He's caught a glimpse. He takes down one. He gets the spray, but he can't connect towards Chris J, who eventually does appear towards the B side, keeps it in control. But considering they only had Tech Nines, really, you know, they had one AK there. That wasn't a bad round from Hellraisers. Is this the first AWP we've seen from Mo? I feel like we haven't seen too much of him with the AWP, but maybe that's just yeah. how a Hellraiser's economy has been lying. They, have, of course, have been struggling. The loser's bonus most definitely is real, though, as they have lost six rounds back to back here on Cobblestone. We'll see where he chooses to take it, looking to maybe catch Dennis out, who has been playing doors very commonly. And Dennis, I think he's considering a, uh, a push through that smoke. He's right on the precipice, and Angel is lying on the other side. This could be deadly. As his second M4 is really eager. It's, it's raring. Sword, it's re really <laughs> raring to go. <laughs> But, but still, no blood drawn. I think we have to highlight as well, Chris J still not going for an AWP. They have a brilliant economy for Mouse Sports at this point. Mo does catch a glimpse. The little jiggle peek in there from Chris J not going to pay out as Mo, Mo will connect towards more of a torso uh, rather than just the leg shot there. And that will open up an opportunity. And it looks like Hellraiser want to take it. Gobby <laughs> and Dennis. Look at Dennis, though. And again, that real keen M4 going to come around, swing into it, finds Mo. That's going to remove at least one presence on long, but the bomb has slipped through. Doesn't matter. Dennis finds another. Angel goes down and Hellraiser's one by one are being picked apart. Next one in on the action. He gets one, but it brings it back to a 2v2. So, fix the new blood. Kucha, seasoned pro, is going to be readying himself 
to hold this site. Cooch is the one on site. Fix is the one trying to babysit as best he can from the van. Nico fat car catches a glimpse of Fix, and now Cooch is the one left to his own devices. No chance, no hope. Dennis looking so fantastic in that round. Three frags, and he's looking really at home with the M4A4. And I love the way he was playing around the smoke then, getting aggressive, singling out one, singling out Mo, then expecting maybe a couple to make it through the smoke, not challenging until the bomb's gone down. Just really nice stuff from Mouse, just showing you what they can do really when they feel confident. But then again, I, there we go. This is what I want to see. Chris J picking up the orb, feeling confident with it, and maybe knowing that really how Razors can't afford one. I think it was probably more Mo getting that frag was like him throwing down the gauntlet, like, oh, you're orping? Okay, my turn. Let's see what I can do with it. He is, of course, <laughs> been uh, at the top of the scoreboard mm. with the rifle. He's just yep. under Dennis now. 12 frags for him, 13 for Dennis. And Chris J probably going to go for that early long peak. It's not like I think it's going to be there for him because the entire T side is setting their sights on an early B. Every time this has happened, it's been Nico, it's been Next finding them, but it's going to be actually a good start for Hellraiser this time. Removing Next, but there's still Nico, there's still God B, and the wall of those M4s is really causing havoc for Hellraiser, but it's a 3v3, Alex, but God B is not done yet. Well, that flash is going to delay him. Is that, is that Molly going to force him out into the open? But there's a very blind terrorist. It was fixed. Now down and out. Could find Adrens as well. There's another man just lingering in that smoke as well. And Hellraisers, they are getting a bit locked onto that platform area. Chris J training his scope on towards their location. These flashes are really causing havoc. Dennis, a fragging machine at the moment, justifying why he is at the top of the scoreboard currently. And it's going to be all Chris J to finish that one up. I say that. Did just bring him down to 16. A little connection through the stone. It's going to be too easy for Dennis, though as he finds the final head. And the Mouse Sports score is getting a little out of hand at this point. This is getting out of control. <laughs> I, I just don't know what to say about this. It's been the immovable force. And look how many players have been keeping alive. This is something that the observers point out really nicely, actually, is the fact that the reason their economy is just staying so strong is the fact that they're not having to repurchase most of these weapons. The last couple of rounds are getting closer, but it doesn't seem to matter. 9-1 is still the score. They have full utility. Chris J's got the AWP. We're finally seeing Hellraiser's going towards the A site, or at least long, when Chris J's got the AWP. Let's see what he can do here. And he is going to go for the peak. He gets it. That's mowed down. That's what he wanted to do. That's just kind of wanted. remind him, like, you know, buddy, I can pick this up as well. And Dennis this time actually going aggressive. Did I just hear a, a <laughs> flashbang murder a chicken? I think that's what's going to happen. I want to watch that back. But no, 4v3, poultry murder aside. See what Fix, Angel, and Kucha can piece together with what's been left after the uh, initial fragging. Of course, seeing Mo and Adren down is going to be a real kind of uh, kick in the gut. Kucha fully blind, trying to delay them as best they can. I think there's a pretty good understanding on Mouse Sports' side that the T side are starting to or orientate themselves towards B, and Godby's going to get it. A face full of Angel backs away and is going to happily wait this one out. But there's still a chance here. Hellraisers have the better numbers. They have three players going towards the site where there's only two, but they double stack towards drop. Gobby's going to at least eliminate one of the threats pushing towards them. The last two are just going into the crossfire. They've already spotted them out, and look at this. It's shooting fish in a barrel. Mousewolves have such a great understanding of this, but the individual shot coming out from Fix there, not a bad shout, but I don't think he's going to find much more. Tell a lie. Okay, he gets down next. Maybe I'm riding him off a little early here. Gobby fancy his chances, going for a little jumping shot. Fix finds another. That's three, but it's down to 1v1. He's got so little to work with. Chris J holding his nerve bomb. Gonna go down. This is a full plant. Chris J's creeping ever closer. Chris J needs to land one shot. He does it. Denies any sort of trouble that was coming through. Picks back up the orb and says, nice try, Fix, but uh, don't worry, buddy, I got this. Good demonstration from Fix, though. It's kind of a breath of fresh air to see him fragging in, in such a stylish fashion as well. Chris J just seems just so confident in any scenario like that. Anything where others would feel pressure, Chris J just shrugs it off, has a little smirk on his face, and and just plays sexy CS. Whatever you're into, Alex. All right, T side. <laughs> Not looking <laughs> great for money here. Uh, four AKs, one take nine. A lot of utility though. And Chris J is a great spawn for this picker, Alex. This this could be really dangerous if he oh, goes for it. What was that? He hit the brakes for some reason. There's a reason. Flash. Oh, in his method, in his madness, Mo goes down <laughs> with the late peak. As soon as Mo killed him once he with an really orb, he's like, all right, I'm coming challenged. for you. Yeah, Chris J, I mean, he's been challenged to pick up the orb, and he's most definitely providing. This is probably going to be his third here as they're about to walk straight into his eye line. Oh, he started staring at the ground. Fix punishes that. And in the meantime, some witchcraft and wizardry is going on with the M4. He is keeping that floating in the air. Well, we are in Hogwarts. It's, you know, oh, this is what you wanted. You wanted this to happen in Cobble. <laughs> wanted is a really strong word. All right.
A little bit of magic mm -hmm. there from Adren finding Nex on the rotate. This might keep things a little interesting, but around the backside, Dennis does appear. But it's down to a 2v1, Alex. This is still quite interesting. How Hellraisers mm. might be able to convert this one, maybe. This could be their second. Let's not forget, 10 rounds in a row for Mouse Sports. Finally, it is ended. Hellraisers find their second. Look at that line of blue. That is madness. And of course, you can see just the two diffuses. So the bomb only going down twice in 10 rounds for Hellraisers. The money will be a little short here, though, for Mouse, of course. Not to go such a long run of uh, rather rather easy wins, let's say, in these rounds. It's, it's a little weaker. It's not the ideal utility, but still more than enough to get by into this one. But on the other side of things, we're going to see, once again, Mo picking up the orb. So maybe going to go for the challenge. Maybe get a little bit of vengeance of his own towards Chris J. But no, Chris, back on towards the Sun Stem 4. Going to be playing quite patiently by Long. And let's see. Dennis fancies going aggressive again. I think a lot can be learned from how Dennis has been playing this. Really unique in his positioning. You can see he's just going to basically be able to evade that flash just because he knows an area like that room is... Hang on a second! It's going to be Angel who takes him down this time. But the point I was trying to make is that that's one of those smokes, one of the few smokes where people are willing to flash and push through the smoke. That position enables him to catch them as they do that. He's almost just like a big block, a big... Uh, <laughs> no, absolutely zero. <laughs> zero metaphors <laughs> Zero. Anyway, Chris J is going to try and take Kukri out of this, and he's going to struggle. Brought him down to 23, but it's not enough. And now Mouse, this could very well be the third in a row for Hellraisers. Yeah, and that Griffin will be taken away from his hands as Angel will find God B. And Nyx and Nico, the last two alive. And really, they don't have a great deal of money coming into this next round, but... You know, already Adren's going hunting for them. He could catch out Nico here. Nex is kind of watching the drop. He kind of expects this. Bearing in mind, Adren has been doing this quite consistently. Um, Angel as well, to some degree, just going through drop, just trying to be in between them. But looking for these guns, it's going to be very difficult. They've got each other's backs pretty much here. But Nex could get overwhelmed. But, oh, his timing is sublime. He's already going to find one. I think he might have heard Angel. I'm not too sure. No, Angel has a drop on him. So it's all down to Nico. Try and keep hold of this weapon. He does at least deny Adren, expecting the follow-up from Angel. Gets oh. it. Great shot from Nico. Doesn't want to go too close, because he knows these guys are going to come in. He just have leapt up. Nico stays alive. Going to go for the challenge, and gets taken down. Loses out on the gun, but he made a good stand of it. For sure, as Hellraisers get their third. They need the last two, and I think the fourth is almost a guarantee, considering, of course, Mouse Sports, for the first time in what feels like forever, are going to have to go for an eco. And uh, the only man who's willing to step up to the plate is going to be Chris J. In fact, just as I say that, he's just like, hey, Zeus. guys, Zeus is only 100. Suddenly the party starts and three of them look to put add a little bit of electricity to their lives. <laughs> I'm just going quiet every time you every do Every time this. I do. Like, oh, there oh. It is. that's a perfect example of the witchcraft and wizardry on Cobblestone. That's going to be Dennis, who does take one out of the equation for Hellraisers. But how much more can they find with the Zeuses? Oh, Chris oh J actually, God, oh, don't you dare. Don't no, you no. dare. Oh, he held his... <gasps> oh, my God. Chris J gets the shot. No. Adrian he gets him down. He slipped off the box. And <laughs> God B, don't worry. He's picked up the magic where he left off. He's got another jewel. Uh, kind of like Jewel Elite, you know? Just... What, a Kimbo Zeus? Yeah, I like yeah, that. Yeah, it's, it's a new thing. It's a perk. Uh, but if Hellraisers keep going this way, to be fair, Gobby's in a good spot. I don't think he's going to get the chance. Oh my god, just around the corner. Fix is there. He could literally dome him. Gobby doesn't hear the bomb going down. He's wasted. Oh, Gobby. It was the chance. That could have been beautiful. It could have been magic, but Mal's don't get the opportunity. And actually, uh, at the end of the day, Nico shouldn't be able to find much from this. Yeah, and he won't. It's going to be Adren who does con connect that final shot. And it's going to be 10 4 then. Hellraiser is finally starting to find some form. Too little, too late is most definitely a phrase we could start to use as they need this fifth most definitely. We're not going to be seeing an AWP in play for the CT side. Can't quite scrape together the budget for that. Of course, we saw what Chris J can do when he does get given the AWP, but instead they are going to be going into this one. You can see four rifles across the board, just the FAMAS for Gob B. I'm intrigued to see where Hellraisers choose to do, where choose to go with this one. Yeah, me too. Um Ready Mo expecting maybe a little bit of a challenge there coming through. Maybe just trying to hold the cross in case anyone tries to make a bit of a play. But actually the double orb setup, something we've not seen throughout this mm. game. The economy really not favouring it. It's been fairly sparse, at least um, scarce, should I say, for the Hellraiser's side. Now Sports maybe could have gone for it, but, you know, it's it's, it's a rarity we see Chris J with the orb these days, let alone two of them. But this is an interesting read already from Mouse. They're expecting a real presence towards B. Adren already out towards that platform. It's going to... 
ring alarm bells, but I wonder if the bomb's going to go there. They've drawn four players across. Only Chris J holding towards A. Actually, Cooch is just saying, all right, screw this. Let's head back over. Maybe we've done enough here. Dennis quickly adjusting as well. So, Mouse, reading the situation well. Look at Chris J though. He's just going, trying to be a, like a beacon of intel. He is going to get some information and dart away as the shot from Mo does whistle past his ear. And now the CTs prepare themselves for this hold. The smoke's going to give him a little bit of freedom to maneuver and try and catch Angel out. Oh, brings him low, but not low enough. So aggressive from Chris J. Fortunately, Godby's going to finish where he left off, but it does look like Mouse is starting to find a footing in this site, courtesy of Nex, a double. Now Mo then, who has to piece this one back together again, and he's done a good job already. Got two, looking for the third. Oh, nice little jump peek there. He knows exactly where Nex is. The bomb is not to hand. The peek comes out. He doesn't get it. Mo is being challenged out. Oh. Mo, what are you doing? Goes for the jump shot. I guess it was an, a little bit of a mistake with the old mouse uh, coming in, maybe having jump on that mouse wheel. Not what you want to be doing. But still, at the end of the day, Hellraiser's only four rounds there. 11-4. A CT side from Mouse Sports that they most definitely will not be forgetting anytime soon. Yep. Very, very good to see Mouse Sports in the form they're in. Nico, who seems to have just like, okay, I have to use the M4A4. I guess I'll start getting insane control yep. with that weapon as well. Really good to see the newest edition fragging as well as he was. Nex as well, who's looking good. All these individuals, this is something I said to Lee yesterday, is that mm. now you look at Mouse, I mean, this is absolutely no disrespect to Spiddy whatsoever, no. but now you look at Mouse and you see Nico in that roster, you look at fraggers like Chris J, you have Gobby directing these fraggers, it's pretty terrifying, I have to say. There's a hell of a lot of talent there. No one's going to dispute that Nex anytime as well soon. As someone, I don't know how that, he just exactly. slipped my head for a second. Pretty much everyone's playing well. And bear in mind, Dennis as well played brilliantly mm. in his position. He may not have been the top fragger, but it doesn't matter. He was holding that down like an absolute champion, allowing Chris J the ability to do what he does, you know, get those aggressive picks with the AWP when he picked yeah. it up, or play a little more passively with the M4. So really nice balance between these guys. And when they come together like this, you see the potential that Mouse Sports has day in, day out. But let's see if they convert it now in towards the T side. It looks like they already have a plan in mind. So what's the plan, Stan? As they have got another, got two Zeus this time in play for the T side. I think people realize that it is actually a pretty effective method, I mean, especially these pistols with the uh, new change to the price. It's become actually a pretty good CQB weapon to use. And uh, see how far this gets him though. Keep sure. That's the only one with a kit. Chris J does find Mo though in the process. That's going to be them trying to molly, fix, and Kadran out of position. It's not going to do too much though. That's already first blood drawn, and the T-Set are going to start pushing in off the back of that. And I love the way Chris J with the bomb almost turned around, like, maybe we can go A. We don't need to, because look at this. Mouse Sports just flooding oh. out the side. Bodies everywhere. Fix just overwhelmed as Mouse Sports make their present known. Kucha goes for a bit of a run, but that was just the Glock train coming through. It, it, it actually was. They had their caps on, and they were tooting, and they charged into B. Now, that's, that's what you do on a train. You wear your little cap, and... <laughs> <laughs> and it goes, okay. How was it go? I'm not, I'm not gonna toot. <laughs> anyway, Mouse Sports looking very, very good. As they did just kind of swarm all over the uh, B site like a rash. Now going into this second right. round, we're gonna be seeing another Zeus in play, which keeping things exciting for me as I've become a bit of a Zeus fanboy all of a sudden. But now, Nico. He's gonna be challenged out by Adra, but that's a perfect smoke to enable him to get into a more comfortable position. It does look like the CTs have stacked out on B. Well, that's a big thing. Four players here. And we know that actually Mouse did turn one of these rounds, bearing in mind that was with the Zeus's in play. It did come into a factor when they were on the CT side and Hellraisers were on the T. But look at this. Mouse Sports instantaneously taking over drop. Wow. But will they expect Mo? They check the corner, but it doesn't matter. He gets one. And now sets up for Kucha to get the other. Denies the presence through drop. They can focus back towards platform, but it's still a 2v1. Hellraisers have done great amounts of damage, but I just don't feel as though Angel's going to get a gun out of this one. It might be very difficult here. There's one waiting in drop. I'm pretty certain. Did we not see him go down? Yeah, there is. Yep. So he should there be able to recover the AK now. That does kind of uh, give him a little bit room to breathe, but time, of course, is becoming more and more of a factor. He's got two to find, and they're playing the time beautifully as he is going to be taken down by Nico. Nico, damage control, as he does pick up three frags in rather quick succession, as that's going to be Mousebots extending their lead into the danger zone. 13-4.
as they are now just three away from picking this one up comfortably. And it's something we said, Mousebots need to start picking up these victories as it could potentially really spiral out of control considering their recent losses in the first day of the Pro League. Well, that's the thing. Everyone puts Mouse up now, you know, as, as a very much a top 10 team. Um, arguably, probably very quite high up in that, maybe not to the quite highest echelons, but they are an extraordinarily good team with a hell of a lot of potential here. So you expect big things from them. And Adrian going to try his hand at the Zeus. Let's see what he can do here. Oh. Oh. Denied. Next, going to put him down. And it's going to be a very quick flood from Mouse, it looks like. At least from Chris J towards his side. P90 to hand. Going to try and start building up that bank because he does know that Hellraiser is going to be a little strapped for cash. But cautious play. And they actually back out and play the situation well. Yeah, this is nice. They managed to get three members from Hellraiser's all over towards A. And now just trying to get the read. I think Fix has got the one who's uh, starting to get a little angsty. Starting to move back towards drop room. And a flashbang does... Definitely uh, encourage his movement. But now, Mouse is just going to start flooding in again. This is going to be just a repeat of what we saw in the pistol round. All coming in at once as they do need to check corners. And the CTs all unarmored, unready. Actually, hang on a second. Moe's got it in good prime position to get two. Fix was there as well. And suddenly, Mouse Sports have lost two members. They should be able to kind of deal with this eventually. But a good, good, uh, good step in the right direction from Hellraiser. Yeah, got to be at the end here in the footsteps as Angel's desperately trying to get close enough to put that P250 to play. But yeah, Mouseport's taking strides in this game here. And it could be a match point very quickly for them. But we're going to see the buy coming out from Hellraisers. This has to be big from them. Otherwise, Mouseport's will get onto that 15th round. And it looks like Chris J is actually sticking with that P90. Are we really seeing like a P90 meta coming out now? <laughs> I mean, it's always been present. We saw Freakazoid doing the same thing on Cloud9, True. where he has a real kind of tendency to, to pick it up in more so on Cobble than other maps because yep. of that drop room, because it's that, that prevalence of these sort these close angles. And now let's see what Mo can do with an AWP in its hands. He knows he's going to be tested on towards platform, but in what capacity? Three members of Mouse are still staying back. But I love this from Nico. He's been constantly getting out towards platform, avoiding the smokes. But as you said, Mo this time is a difference. He could get the shot and it could change everything. Let's see if he predicts it. Oh, lovely little Nico. shoulder peek. That's brilliant. And bearing in mind, Mo is a glass cannon. There we go. Nico's finally dealt with. That's the first step in the right direction for Hellraisers. Now, trying to build off that fix is the one responsible for drop room. And I think he's about to have a real challenge ahead of him. Just the one for one trade. Dennis is the one to step in behind. But I don't think he's anticipating Adrian from behind. At least he wasn't until the footsteps came in. Now it's a 2v2 with the bomb down. It's going to come down to what the CTs can do to regain control of the sun. Yeah, real aggression. Oh, Chris J, but God B. Just astounding accuracy with that AK. Kucha and Adren just get trashed as he picks up four for himself, showing, look, hey, I'm the in-game leader, but I still got, you know, a fair bit of talent behind it. And now Hellraiser's merely four rounds. A real shoddy buy coming out. This looks like it's going to be game over very, very quickly. Yeah, best win for Mouseport so far in the Pro League if they do manage to pick this one up. Chris J back on the P90 as he's going to be raring to go as we see the triple mag seven buy from Hellraiser's. I'm, I'm all down for gimmicks. I saw a uh, triple scout win around, a very crucial round for NIP <laughs> just yesterday. Let's see if triple mag seven can work in a similar fashion. I can imagine Mouse going to be quite cautious about this round because you don't know what they're coming into with this buy. Is it CZs with utility? Is it going to be this uh, Max? Oh, oh God, Mo, you want to land that. There we go. Kucha finds next as well. That's the bomb loose. That's really big. Yeah, that's actually a real uh, real mistake. He's kind of shot himself in the foot there. Fortunately, Dennis is going to be shooting Mo in the chest. And now just two members remain for the German side. And this has somehow worked. Nico, oh. don't you? I thought him get, was he getting his knife out there? Was he getting a little excited? And... Hellraiser's managed to uh, deal with them quite comfortably. I think Mouse Sports may be resting on their laurels a little bit there and thinking that they had that one in the back. Yeah, staving off the wolves. And actually, the economy for Mouse isn't phenomenal. Thank you. <laughs> uh, it's going to be the Tech Nines. Oh, Julies from next? Okay. We haven't seen actually much come from the Julies. I think we've seen one kill so far today from the Julies. We know Get yeah. Right picked them up. I think it I think was a rather minor change. It, it is, but. We'll have to see how much, you know, if, if someone has a really good game with them or picks up, you know, a couple of kills, then people will start following trend, but not seen it thus far. And the economy now looking a lot better for Hellraiser. They've got a bit of utility there. They've got the guns they'd want, you know, a lot less Mag 7s. But then again, when Mal's get confident, you know they get dangerous, but there's a lot of Glocks here. Chris J just with the Zeus as well. It's, it's not going to be an easy one for them. Yeah, by no stretch of the imagination. As the bomb has definitely got its kind of heart set on the B site in the hands of God B. Getting that bomb down would definitely put their uh, money in a much better position, but I don't think Hellraisers can really do too much about it. They've managed to evade fixed for now. They're going to hunt him down. They want that M4. They want that threat gone, and they are going to be able to bring him down to 40. Not much more, though, as that molly's going to be perfectly positioned. Dennis does finally manage to connect, but at what cost? 
As Nico and Nexus start to push on towards platform. Very in mind, Dez is the one with the bomb Oof. as well. Nico's there. He's going to take down the Dren. It's down to Mo on the side. He's going to be the pillar of resistance. And Angel with support comes in from the doors. Dennis does get Mo, but it doesn't matter. Two remain for Hellraisers. They stave off the walls again for another round. Mm. As Mel Sports on 15, Hellraisers on 6. And Hellraisers again, able to repurchase into this. A little tighter for cash, but we are seeing a buy coming out from Mouse now. One wrong move, one overextension, one kind of blink and you miss it moment. And Hellraisers have lost this game. Now, of course, knowing that, they, they do want to kind of make them feel a little uncomfortable. Try something different. Try something that Hellraisers would not be really willing to deal with uh, in a kind of all-in commit commitment. And uh, now it does look like the four members of Mouse are all outside. They're all just spraining through that smoke. They're desperately trying to catch someone uh, out of position now. Doesn't look like too much is going to come of it at the start. No, it's 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 a real kind of slow round from Mouse. They just, if they can get an opportunity, it'd be fantastic. But it looks like they are going to make their way towards A eventually. They've slowly taken it over. Kucha's hearing all of this, so he can hear Chris J walking around. He knows they're here. Angel, Angel's falling a little little bit more passively towards the site, and now you can see Adren starting to get a little closer too. So Hellraiser's reading it pretty well. I want to see if Nico can keep maybe Mo or Fix towards that B site. If he can't, this could be trouble. But actually, Kucha catching the flash then, not able to work off the back of it, and Nex will live to fight another day. And actually, Adren backing away. If these if these guys don't realize this is going to be an A play, this could get dangerous. Kucha's out of position. Oh my word, this is a beautiful play from Nico, pulling Kucha all the way back out of that close position. But Angel might have just caught a glimpse of the feet here. He's right around behind the Max. This could be dangerous. This is going to be dangerous. Andrew gets one. He's going to be able to find a second as well. Truly magnificent as this could be a third, as that's going to be all they need. Angel really pulling his team back from this one. And Dennis is trying to do the same thing for Mouse. As he has paid a pretty heavy price, down to 13, and Nico is just going to walk over the flames down himself to 54, and they do not have the time, and they do not have the health to pick up anything else. No, really nicely done from Hellraiser, mostly Angel. Well, in only, that round. Yeah. yeah. Because that's starting to look more and more possible. They were believing in that B, Nico over there was really selling that fake. They pulled everyone back again, but, oh, Angel did find Nico as well in the end, so a really big round from him. Hellraisers, that puts seven on the board. It's still such a big gap to close, but no sign of things to come just yet. I mean, Mo's got the AWP again. Maybe you're going to be picking up another round here. And, you, yep. you know, once you, you start seeing that ball rolling, we could be seeing Mouse Bots falling into a real nasty position. They've done so much, though, and that's all down to those 10 rounds they managed to acquire over on CT. And it looks like a fast play towards B. It looks like it's going to go straight out here. Screw the nades. Let's just get it in their faces. Adrian falls back smartly. Not out staying as welcome. Allowing the rest of Hellraisers to pick up the kills. Especially Mo there. Joined by Adren. So now Chris J, last man standing. Not going to have much of a chance in picking anything up here. As there we go. CZ comes out. Hellraisers. Knocking Mouse Sports back. They're showing some life here on the CT side. They are. And I mean, you know, I, I use that term too little too late. And you have to wonder how far can Hellraisers push this. We saw 10. To consecutive CT rounds for uh, Mouse Sports. They've got four so far. How much further can Hellraiser oh, take this? Julie's. Julie's coming in. We're going to get excited because that's triple Julie's. There's a whole of extra, load of extra pistols currently on the map. <laughs> it's it's kind of gross to look at, isn't it? Like two Tech Nines and dual Elites, just in case you wanted some more weird stuff to go on. Anyway, might get a chance to find here. But to use Nico again, to be trying to make his way out as quick as possible towards platform. He's doing it really well so far. But uh, a lot more utility is going to make it really difficult to actually make anything out of this. Bearing in mind, the rest of them are playing super passively. Mo already scouted out towards A, but there's not that much of a presence. So they, they can pretty much keep the numbers here for Hellraisers. Yeah, it's just, I mean, it's another factor, of course, that you have to consider. Is that Mouse Sports, if they do go into this one with a full buy, they have to find some success and come back to that in a second. Because Hellraisers have just got two very... Strong start. Adrian's as well is going to be cleaning things up, and it looks like it's all on to Chris J. He has armor, but just the pistols for him. And another round potentially on the board for Hellraiser. It's not quite out of the woods just yet. Chris J. is going to be hunted down, and it's going to be Kucha who ends that one. 9 to 15 then, as Mouse Sport still struggling to find that final round. Yeah, it's evading them thus far. I, I'm curious to see if we're ever going to see Chris J. actually going for the AWP on the T side. <laughs> We don't see it all that often. I think he can be such an important player, even just to let to go off on his own. I think he can be that explosive one, but... No, nope. rifle it is. All right, back on the rifle. Sticking that one out. And on the other side of things, of course, Mo will be playing that one straight up as well. He's going to be sticking on the AWP. And Christian with real aggression early on. 
slowing himself down as the rest of Mouse are still heading over towards B. I mean, do you think that at this point they've reached the kind of point of frustration now with Mouse, or is this just kind of, okay, we'll get it eventually, try this, try this? Can't see how you wouldn't be getting frustrated when you are so close, yet so far, it seems, going into this one. Still no warp in play, as you highlighted already, and Nico, who has been a bit of a master of platform, seems to have been locked out thanks to uh, Adrian and Angel. Well, last time we saw Mo getting the AWP kill on Chris J, it did oh. spur him to pick it up himself, but it doesn't seem to be the case here. A lot of that utility going to waste, all those Molly Smokes flashes being kind of negated in this one as Mao's dropping well, like flies. And Adren gets boosted up. Gobby's going to find him, though. That's an opportunity, but will they keep this one going? Gobby goes in again. He finds another. Gobby has the bomb bearing mind. They've got to know this now. Fix is staying close. He doesn't want to leave that position. And Kucha out of spot. Mo over by A. They've got to know this. Mao Sports can make something out of this round. Certainly can. It's going to help with that overextension. Fix foolishly stepping a little too far from that one. And now all onto Mo and Dennis. Dennis has the ability to pick this one up. But I don't think Mo's going to let him, as that's going to be three for him in that round. And Hellraisers, they keep on fighting. Gobby did everything in his power to bring that round home, picking up two crucial frags walking out on platform. And still not enough. Hellraisers, they reached double digits. They re uh, they've come out on, into the CT side and showing exactly why I thought this game was be a lot closer than the prior, you know, the, the prior few. I, I think this is what I wanted to see from them. Mo has a great spawn towards B. That's the first time we're going to see him playing this at least from the start. But on the other side of things here, the Tech Nine train could really put that to ruins. But let's see how confident Mo's feeling. He is going to go for the active peak here, actually. So very confident. Sees a touch of a hand, gets the tag towards God B. The plan is certainly known now, and Mouse Force hit the brakes. He has done this every single round, and he's probably going to be able to get away with this with his life. He's charged straight through, catches Fix, walking out a drop. He's going to be like, what just happened, Adren? Fortunately, damage control mode can only last for so long. Now a 3v3. Mo is the one to equalize. It's Kucha. He's just going to have to just sit back and wait because the frags keep coming from Mo. He is pulling his team back from the brink. That's incredible from him. Three the round before, four in this one. And Hellraisers, they're on to 11. Surely, Mouse Sports need to find something. Something needs to change for the German side to find this final round. That might be it. Chris J picking up the orb. Finally, someone to challenge down Mo. He's been having free reign here. We saw him then just playing it like that turret. He's been on A, he's been on B. Every time they go towards him, he's stepped up to the plate. That's what we've been discussing. And... We're going to have to find out if maybe Chris J can make that difference. It's been so imperative before. And Chris J as an individual can be such a big player. Let's see if that's going to come true here. As already, he's going to be taking that peek. And it looks like Mo's going for this one as well. He's heading down towards long. This is what I mean. There's the Chris J difference. That can change a whole round. The Chris J difference. That sounds like a real good advertisement. As now, potentially, he could be the reason. He could be the catalyst in Mouse Sports. First round win in what has been a bit of a bit of a trek. Now into the seventh in a row. Seven consecutive rounds for the Hellraiser's side. Still a 4v4 though. Numbers are level and that bomb is not committing anywhere just yet. No, but it is slowly working its way up towards a long. This is dangerous. There's three players here for Hellraisers. Kucha, Angel, and Fix, all in the right place. And you know, Mouse aren't being subtle about this one, but Angel actually backing away, second guessing at the end. This is too obvious. Surely not. Now we see the slower play coming out. Can they catch anyone out trying to peek, trying to get that extra information? Is anyone going to overextend? Will it be Kucha, Fix? So far, Chris J still holding such a tiny angle there, but edging his way closer. Dennis has the bomb. 35 seconds on that clock. There's still a lot of time to be played with here. Angel and Adren still on that B side, but close by that they can rotate. And next, starting to build up here too. Hellraiser's playing very patiently. And the point to be made is that there's zero flashes, zero smokes on the Hellraiser's side. They have nothing left to delay. They have nothing left to retake. If Angel and Adren are locked out, they may very well struggle. Next gets the frag onto Kucha. Time, though, is of the yes and 10 seconds. The T side need to get the bomb down on. They need to start fragging. Next is the one to do the latter, as it's going to be Dennis who gets it. This could be it. All onto Adren's. Gobby secures it, and they made it difficult. That was such a grind, but Mouseports do manage to pick up the victory. After what was, I think that was, as I said before, seven rounds in a row held from Hellraisers. They yeah. demonstrated that they too can go on a bit of a rampage on CT Cobble. Yeah, it really was very impressive. They had the number of mouths then throughout that game. The amount of times that they got the opening kills on that CT side was very impressive. And it looked like mouths were running out of options. And then Whew. suddenly the economy allowed them to pick up the op towards Chris J. He takes down Mo, mm. you open up long, they work off the back of it, and it just paid out really well. For I them. mean, do you think that that whole A strategy, because that was something new. That was something new from Mouse. They hadn't tried that before with this mm. incredibly late push onto A. Was that just down to Chris J's frag, or was that the plan all along? I think if you get an early pick like that, you Why might as well work you? off the right. back. 
back of it. If you're already there, they've always been playing towards A a little, but then spreading through towards B. If you're already there and you've already got the pick, you've taken down the one player who'd been such a nuisance in the last yeah. two rounds. He was, what, four kills and three, the one prior? Work off the back of it. They even slow down the pace, so that instantaneous stack towards the site, then disperse, because like, they're not going to... They, they wouldn't. They would have played no, already, they right? Shouldn't. So that kind of double guessing, that double bluffing, just working out well for Mouse, just showing that you know these guys know what they're doing. God be at the helm. With them working <laughs> off the back of that kind of opening pick. I do feel like that's one of those games that Gobby's going to look through and work out what brick wall they hit because their yeah, attack did to. just seem to kind of. It really didn't provide enough for them, and that's going to be mm. really, really tough for them to uh, to work through. I mean, that's but that's just something that he can take a look at, and he's going to look to improve. Not just yet, though, as we are going to be seeing more from Mouse. Can't be watching that vod just yet. Our final game of the night. <laughs> It's going to be from Mouse Sports and SK. Can SK pick up their first win of the ESL ESE Pro League? We will find answers after this.